So this is a tiny little patch knife kit that I bought from the Townsend's Reenacting Company. It was $15 and it comes with three items. It comes with a tiny little knife blank for you, a pewter bolster for the handle part of the knife, and it comes with a little set of instructions. And I'm realizing that in order to open it, I need a knife. But the reason why I bought this is because I need a knife just so I have something very, very small to carry with me because a lot of my knives are uh, between the eight inch and 12 inch range if we're counting my sax knife. And they, they can be rather bulky to carry around. Even, even the smaller sort of kit knives that I have for doing daily tasks are on the larger side. A knife of this size will be good if you're in a situation where you don't really wanna be carrying a larger knife out in the open, but you still wanna have the utility uh, aspect here in character rather than just carrying uh, a multi-tool. Features, the blade is made in the USA. It's made of high carbon steel and shapened using a convex edge offering the greatest durability durability. And from my research, when it comes to bushcrafting, a convex edge is what you want. And I believe that this is uh, forged 1095 steel, they say on their website. Needed tools and other supplies. This is important. Choose your own handle stock, whether it be wood, antler, or something else. You will need a drill, a one quarter inch, and a three sixteenths drill bit, two part epoxy adhesive, and a mallet or a hammer. And if you're looking for things that are maybe a little bit more historically accurate to use as glue instead of a modern epoxy, uh, go ahead and check out their video on the subject and read the comments. There are a lot of suggestions down there that vary from boiling antler and then letting it dry inside um, and some other recipes using uh, brewer's pitch. I'm shaving off little pieces of my own thumbnail with this. So this is a sharp knife. So the first step is to select our handle stock and then we have to drill out the hole and then from there it's very simple to just to glue the knife in there and then essentially you'd be done with this project. I'll have the slightly longer step of wanting to make a small sheath for it as well. So what do I want this handle to be? I have a couple of options. I have a bow that I was trying to make, uh, but the stave snapped, so now it's useless. I could use that, that's made out of maple. The one thing that they recommend that you don't do is uh, use pine wood because that's too soft. You wanna be using a hard wood. But I also have in my possession uh, some antlers here, which I was given as a Christmas gift, but I might just go ahead and see if if the knife would fit in any of these horns anyway. The thing I'm concerned about though is in an adventuring context when you're running and, and jumping around, if one of these is potentially going to cause me injury if I uh, land on it wrong. I think I'm gonna go with wood. All right, I'm going to my garage. I'm wearing modern clothes at the moment because I'm dealing with a lot of sawdust at the moment. And in a second, I'm gonna be dealing with um, some dyes and then boiled linseed oil. The wood that I'm using is a piece of maple. I believe it came from my uh, front yard. I originally tried to make a bow out of it, but um, the stave broke, so I'm now repurposing it. So with this knife, the plan is to just do a friction fit. I'm not gonna worry about epoxying the blade into the handle or anything. Um, you know, I can take it out right now, but it's not all the way in there. And that's just because, once again, I like the modularity of being able to replace things easily. So when the handle eventually deteriorates, um, which probably won't be for a number of years, I can just pull it off and make a new one. And so I wanted to mirror the sort of curve that you get with an antler because I wanted to use an antler originally, um, but none of the antler pieces that I had were quite the right size. The hole that I drilled in this was actually not completely straight. And that's because the setup that I was using, I, ju I just had a vise on the floor. And so it pivoted a fair bit. Um, so the, the blade actually isn't completely straight inside the handle. You can see that it sort of has, I don't know if you can see the blade even, but you can see that it sort of has got um, a slight curve to it. And lots of modern knives have that anyway, so it's not that huge of a deal. What I ended up doing was cutting, take the blade out, I, I cut the top of the handle at a slight angle so that the bolster would fit on it better when the blade is in, and it has a nice ergonomic shape. I did most of the work with my ax. The method that I found most effective for cutting such a small piece with an ax, next time I'll leave the blank longer um, and get it more to the shape that I need. But this time I was working with a pretty small piece. So instead of chopping with the ax, which would have been pretty dangerous, um, or trying to use a chisel or something, I bit the blade of the ax into the wood and then chop the whole thing the same way that you might try to split a piece of firewood, just using the weight of the ax to carve that material away. And I got it down pretty close and then I moved on to uh, this Black & Decker 
electric Dremel tool. I could have done the whole thing by hand. This thing is doable by hand. I just didn't want to have to spend that time. And then eventually I did move on to hand sanding. So I took it from 100 to 400 grit sandpaper to get it nice and smooth. This one swells as it gets towards the end of the handle so that it fits my hand better. And I don't have historical um, sources for this, but I was capable of doing it. So I, you know, I don't imagine that people wouldn't have done it. Um, I have finger grooves up here towards the up here towards the bolster to make it just a little bit easier to index my fingers. So a lot of a lot of the work has just been refining the way that the handle fits my hand because it's a custom knife. So why not why not have it be exactly how I want it, right? If I just wanted some sort of stick to be the handle you know that would have been easier but why not take the time and get it right the first time so the next step is that i'm going to actually try to see if this maple is going to take a leather die i, I could use a wood die um, but never waste the project to experiment with right and then i'm going to give it a top coat of boiled linseed oil and the difference between boiled linseed oil and raw linseed oil as far as i can tell is simply that boiled linseed oil is exposed to heat in its curing process before they put it in the can so it is supposed to dry uh, substantially faster than raw linseed oil so what i have here is a blank piece of the maple that i was using just to do a color test so two-thirds of it is stained with the leather dye and this end here is just what the color looks like with only the boiled linseed oil the middle is is the boiled linseed oil over the dye and then the edge here is just the leather dye by itself. The boiled linseed oil takes a little bit of the dye coloration away and exposes that wood grain a little bit more. It gives it sort of a, a golden color that I really liked. So I went ahead and I dyed the entire handle with the leather dye, which took beautifully. It ended up a little darker than I thought it would. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back over that with the boiled linseed oil, maybe do a couple of coats. It actually dries very quickly. It doesn't stay tacky for very long. I've put the handle on an all point so that I can do the entire thing without having to worry about getting my fingerprints um, on it and then it can have a nice even smooth coverage. And then I'm placing it in this cup so that the entire thing can dry without having to come into contact with anything. It'll dry more evenly and hopefully it'll dry a little bit more quickly as well. And then with just the paper towel that I was using for the boiled linseed oil, I want to open it up so that there aren't layers that will trap heat so that I can dry out by itself. Then I'm going to put it uh, in some water and then I'll dispose of it properly. I know that I said I wanted to have a friction fit, but I did eventually go with a little bit of glue. Because I was using hot glue and not an epoxy, I had to heat it up a couple times at a very low temperature, 160 degrees in the toaster, hoping that didn't ruin the temper of the blade, but it did allow me to uh, fit everything nicely together. A problem that I encountered with the bolster is that either because the grind job I did on the handle wasn't perfect, or because the grind job on the bolster wasn't perfect, the side that doesn't have uh, what appears to be a maker's mark is the side that actually fit against the handle better so the maker's mark if that is even what it is is um, hidden at this point but the bolster fits nice and securely there's no rattling or twisting or anything because the spine and the handle of the knife are not perfectly in alignment with each other that actually made making the sheath a little bit more difficult than I thought it would be um, because the sheath has to be a straight line on the back so I went through a couple of template patterns and then eventually ended up with one that I felt confident with I wet molded it and then let it dry overnight it's got good retention not worried about that coming out at all you get that nice Got the nice click sound going, gave it a nice dye and then antiqued it and then polished it up with wax like I do uh, now for most of my leather working projects. For the hanging system, what I decided to do was punch one single hole right here in the center of the sheath. And as you can see, it hangs exactly horizontally right here at my belt. And I've looped that through with just a little bit of leather tie uh, around a D-ring so that I can manipulate where it moves. And then if I want to take the knife off without having to take off the belt, then I can do that very easily. It also has a belt loop. I don't believe it's historically accurate, but the belt loop actually wraps around the entire scabbard. And then I tuck that underneath my belt and then thread it through the belt loop so it's very nice and uh, tight to my body 
Overall, I had a great time making this uh, little knife here from Townsend's. Again, it just comes with the knife, the instructions, and the bolster, and it is exactly what you make it. And I think I went a little bit overboard. I spent probably a full week making this thing with this uh, custom scabbard as well. But a really nice statement piece that I now have for me, and this will be on me forever. I will always be wearing this. If you enjoyed this video, I am very glad that you did. I hope that you learned something uh, either from my mistakes or from my successes. And if you'd like to see some more projects that I've done here on the channel, you can check out these videos. And in the meantime, I'd like to wish you good luck on your adventures.